today talk by looking at what is appropriate behavior when one is judging themselves. And what that really means is that we look at the human being and so we cannot ignore our physicality to just explore a greater internality. Your externality must be completely comfortable to then allow the external, let's say, images you have to then kind of move through the flows of your internal being. So what I mean by that is that we have ideas and some of these ideas we are not certain of their reality or not. You have a dream and you don't know what it means. You see things that you don't know what it means. You hear things. And when I say you hear things and see things, it's not that you're hearing things other things are saying or other beings are saying to you or other people are saying to you. You're actually interpreting your life in the moment in a way where that is the reality that is presented to you. <laughs> your, the gift of allowance is one where existence gives it to itself. You are not giving it to existence. You are not doing anything for existence because the minute you stop talking, you're no longer within the terms of language and especially what language has come to mean for many people. We feel that language helps us remember our greater expressions. If we were to think if we were to think why the ape evolved to a point it began to speak was simply because the nature of evolution or that movement is one where existence is working in bodies of more expressive ability. And that is simply a man's interpretation. But you will see that the minute you begin observing man, you will also have the clarity and the ability to see ideas beyond man. And what that means is that either you will find that your mind is creating scenery after scenery and it's just an advanced machine, or you will recognize that the awareness of to the mind is a sense of self-communication between form and the formless. The core of your being holds no words. And it's very important we allow ourselves to elevate by simply seeing elevation. A whole lot of people have seen um, or have felt clear realities of their act or the act that they're doing. Someone who hurts another being is not sensitive to the experience on the other side. And if you're not sensitive to the experience of another person, of that area, experience of what's happening in areas you don't see, well, again, a blind man has started spinning with his cane in his hand. And some people will get hit. <laughs> and he might even fall too. So it's very important that you immediately confront your ideas to a point that that which is aware or that which is aware of it confronting is simply just present. Because presence is the ability to recognize that the thinker was irrelevant. <laughs> And so how things become relevant for you are not by you constantly saying, oh, that's a book, oh, that's a, that's a bird, oh, that's a thing. Suddenly you having names and shapes for things. 
You, you allow the names and shapes to naturally come, similar to how you enjoy music. You need to add a great profound element to your sense of beauty so that when you see something beautiful, it's immediately being expressed. It's either being put into words or it's turning into um, the last sentence of your book or it's the beauty of the painter's brush and the secrets it holds. You need to look at yourself in ways that confuse you so you recognize yourself better. And when I say confused, that's what problems are. Problems are moments where we are confused and so we are looking for an answer. So the greatest ability that you can cultivate is the ability to continue and to recognize that continuation is the natural essence of movement. Because what was the intention to move aside from continuing, aside from going somewhere? And these are of course um, these words that I'm saying can be very clearly seen based on subtleties in how you feel your reality is being shaped. We all have our views. In other words, if I began talking about the world I see, I never want you, and this goes for any anyone talking to you, never to throw away immediately your reality. What that means is that if you're someone who you were born in, in place where, for example, there's a religious environment. What that means is that regardless, let's say whatever you were before, the movement that you came to do was around this environment. So you are here to observe your environment. So never carry weight by keeping senses of self from the past alive when they're meant to be constantly changing. One of the biggest cognitions that has become a very good companion for me is that the minute knowledge is shaped it is also limited the minute i say i know everything about this topic is the minute i have created the moments of me observing that i don't know and a lot of the times uh, there is there is a quality in existence in life where we we see that when we cause something we also are involved in the effect now, many people nowadays are causing things without clearly being aware of the effect. And so, if you were more aware of what you were causing, then the effect wouldn't just be thrown. What that means is that if I'm coming, let's say I have a very, <laughs> very nice uh, laptop computer that I just bought. Let's say I, I buy a Mac. MacBook Air and I put it first day I have it, I have it in my bag. If I'm coming back home in my room and I just throw my bag, you know, without just throw it, just release my bag and just throw it somewhere around my bed <laughs> and imagine that it hits so well, you see that I caused something and I had an effect and both the intentions was to let go of my bag, but the way I did it ruined the bag. And so then you have to work with the observance of the things that are affecting you to cause you again to look at things differently. You see, you need to get so comfortable with yourself that even though you mess up, you immediately can pull yourself. So what I find is the biggest problem and I see, I feel this is a delay. There's a lot of power, not powerful, but very inspired and motivated people who are talking about the beauty of working and getting things done. That beauty usually is not seen by people who fail and are constantly looking at your failure. You need to realize your failure is just information. That's it. It is not your life. It is not the decisions you're going to make. <laughs> know that if you can still make a decision, know that if you're still breathing, there's always a way. There's always a way. And even if you're not, <laughs> you see, you will become the way. <laughs> so, I guess look at this in the sense that you need to be careful of how you are causing things to understand from their effects. Do not live, leave uh, problems around. Don't leave it. Instantly handle problems and handle it in a way as if you 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 have talked to, to the condition in such you have handled the condition in such a way that you can do it without hands. <laughs> the 
joy of life very beautifully. He's always trying to know himself, but very beautifully never can. And there's a reason, because if you did know yourself, you would go into non-existence immediately. <laughs> because then where's the journey? Where is, where is the different fluctuations of attention and reality and the cellular experiences of many aspects of the moment in which you are here to receive? A very beautiful concept that I heard, this is just the word, just the word was very nice to me, and it was the word of activation. And you, you look at activation and you wonder, what is being active? What are we activating? And could the voice of someone have affected my voice now? <laughs> is my voice really my voice? And you see, once you are no longer afraid of deep questions, you gain the ability to really experience the answers. Hate and love are part of the same coin. And we're not really looking for money here. We're not looking for a wealth that we can collect or a wealth that cannot be taken. You will really see that the sage knew in his very transparent wisdom that similar to how you probably might not hold a dumbbell in your hand <laughs> for for hours. You you know have a heavy dumbbell. You you will see that there is no need for you to step in confusion when you are clarity. And so, if there is confusion coming throughout your day, pay attention to it immediately and instantly. Handle that confusion by in inputting your own information. So if I'm in a place and everyone's like, you failed, or let's say, let's say in, in front of the president, I fall down, you know. <laughs> and for many people, they might think that th that's their biggest fall, but <laughs> the ability is to instantaneously get up and be like, hello, Mr. President, I really want to shake your hand. So, you know, it's, it should be worth it. Yeah, it's, it's something like, you know, you engage by allowing your own natural playful attention to simply look at the problems. Clarity is a gaze that cannot be um, left, I guess, on, uh, let me say that in another way. Clarity can never be blurred when you are aware and you know how clear you are. In other words, in other words, if you really know who you are, you will realize that you don't need to ask anyone about it. You will realize that the silence is also is already answering your question. Sometimes life is oblivious to its own beauty just to see that it's been preparing itself to be aware of a greater beauty. And even that greater beauty is preparing. If you take your life too statically, and what I mean by that, the images of your life too statically, and I guess what that means is that if you look for snapshots, if you want just wealth, a snapshot of money, if you want a snapshot of something, snap or money, that's good. But you, will, you need to realize that it is in an active state. In a, it is in a state of action that things are done. And a state of action doesn't require a lot of thought, but more the honest intention to do. You are the only one who can activate yourself completely because you or the one who will know how complete you are. The voices of men will soon fade when you recognize that man was just an idea fading into itself. It's as if the minute everybody stops speaking, that silence has a voice. And so, 
very gracefully, guys. When failure comes, when something hits you, don't don't stand there, and don't create an enemy as a failure. A lot of people make it an enemy and bring emotions of overcoming the enemy, which is good. I mean, your life can be very tough. I mean, you choose the imagery that is that is most notable to you. But I suggest that look at everything that happens to you, good, bad, or whatever way you you choose to see it, as information, and then allow the information to naturally be a fashion. By how your practice engages with the surroundings. There is no greater gift than self-awareness. And the minute you recognize that it is as if you are a mirror, and so all that you see is also a mirror as well, you will see that any form put in your consciousness can have infinite quality. Because your nature can pull it there through its remembrance, and what that means is that there are senses of ourselves that are more able than other senses of self. And the minute they are in the present in the same space of awareness as we are in our sense of conscious remembrance, there is an activation because the sense of self that was limited cannot remain limited because you're looking at the limitation. The limitation is transforming by your mere sense of approach. Throughout my life, I have had many moments where I felt that it is not appropriate to speak. In other words, I, I noticed that, for example, let's say when, in one year of my life, I had an interpretation of the world which I didn't constantly change. I kept myself in my comfort zone because I tried, because I ignored the jungle that was outside. And when you ignore the jungle, you know, and let's say if I'm in a jungle and I just close my eyes and I choose not to see it, well, you know, it's still a jungle. You know, there's, there's, there's animals there that will playfully engage in biting you. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, think of the self that cannot be bitten. You know. <laughs> Again, the actor only acts as long as there's a stage. So, become aware of your act. Let your actions naturally flow. Let your activation occur because you innately know. You just have a faith in existence rather than a faith in the forms of existence. You are direct experience in life. So with that, your knowing will look at itself and think that it was touched, and so you internally, as if your whole life, you will see in one moment of clarity that oh, I've been thinking, I've been this aspect of the moment, this little part of the moment, I was this thing of the moment, this thing of the moment, and you see that your whole life, you've been choosing to interpret one aspect of your moment of experience. To simply be aware of the moment of experience means simply to walk. In an auditorium where all eyes are aware of you, and so when I say all eyes are aware of you, these are all of the eyes of the, your greatest ideas of of ideas. You know, you have seen a beautiful vision, and regardless of how distant you are, I know many people who I just feel, I just look at the person, and I just know innately this man has great vision, but he's he's not allowing himself to communicate that vision. And that is the problem when our environment gets a voice louder than our own. Go into your solitude and shout to such an extent where the echo was always the voice and the clarity of the first words. Much blessings and Namaste.